The people who own and control most of the world, you know, are not inept. They're getting richer and richer, and the people, the ordinary people of the world are getting poorer and poorer. The number of people living in poverty in the world is growing at a faster rate than the world's population, which is growing mm-hmm. quite fast as it is. Yeah. So, so, you see, things, in other words, things aren't getting better. And we see that same thing right within the U.S. People say to me, why, you mean American policy, they would go and do all that to, just to destroy these people's social programs and privatize everything in their countries and expropriate all their resources and, 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 and increase the gap between the rich and the poor? You think that's what the policy is dedicated to in all these corners of the world? I said, well, that's what it's dedicated to in the U.S., that's what free market policy is about here. That's exactly what they're doing here. They're cutting back on social programs. They cut back on taxes to the rich. They cut back. Uh, uh, wages have gone flat and not keeping up. Um, and meanwhile, the rich few get the super rich get richer and richer, and the rest of us must work harder and harder to stay in the same place. Mm-hmm. If you're working harder and harder to stay in the same place, you're not staying in the same place. Not staying in the same you're place. Slipping, you're slipping back, yeah. Well, certainly what I've uh, seen, you know, being up here in Canada, you know, we're seeing uh, the rise of a conservative right wing that's, in any case, trying to demolish the gains that have been made by working people over the years and, you know, um, almost move us closer right. to, like, what you're seeing, I guess, in the United States. Yes, rolling and, back the gains that have been won, mm-hmm. hard-fought gains. Yeah, and then it's quite sad to see them, uh, you know, really making a very, very serious and quite frightening bid for power in Ontario itself, which is where I am. And, right. of course, they've already gained a majority in, um, in Parliament. In but... Parliament. Uh, Uh, a debt, that's all. It's, it's just lending more money uh, to the country, but it's not. And what you got to do now is hand over all the communication industry, the transportation industry, every, any, anything that might be in the public domain. And these are the very things. These are the things that have to be wiped out because they're socialistic. And, and, and it's a funny thing. What they demonstrated that socialism works. A socialized post office works more efficiently and better than a privatized one. I remember the mm. U.S. post office used to be, used to be completely publicly owned. It wasn't broken up in sectors and all that. Right. It was publicly yeah. owned and, and used to get deliveries two times a day, six days a week, and it was fine. It was one of the best postal services there are. Today, today it's much tougher, much tougher on workers, much more expensive, and and and, and much of it is going into private hands. And that, that, that process of privatizing the post office uh, started with Nixon. Well, it showed the post office worked better when it was socialist. Railroads in Europe work better when they're government-run and government-owned than Amtrak when it's privately owned mm. and it's milked, it's milked for f- private profit. How can you expect to get something good out of a system like health service or transportation or... Or, you know, or hospitals and such, when the function, or, 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 or schools, when the function, the primary function is to extract as much profit as possible by private corporate owners, then you're not going to get the kind of services you need. Private ownership might be better for, you know, a specialty restaurant or something, or, or some other, I don't know, a fashion, a, a fashion uh, house or, so, or something. Yeah. But, or some small, some small service businesses I can see where private ownership might have a role and small business might have a role. But the, but the problem with capitalism is, is their enmity towards so, socialist or publicly owned services. What they hate about publicly owned services is that they do work, and that's why they don't want them. That's why they're trying to destroy Social Security in the United States, United States because yeah. it does work. It's the most successful anti-poverty program that that we have in this country. Uh, you, you never miss a Social Security check. Uh, the administrative costs for Social Security are about 2% of the total intake on it. I mean, vastly less than private insurance. Private insurance is more like 20, 30 percent, because that has to go for profits, advertising, and all the stuff that they do. So, so this is this is what the war is. It's really a war to defend, extend, and expand the free free market capitalism. 
mm-hmm. and 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 most and to, unfortunately most of the people, even people who say they are left and progressive and such, don't seem to understand that or ever carry it that far. Instead, they talk about how stupid this president is, or how silly that is, or how contradictory these are. You know, here's one oh, dictator yeah. you support, and there's another dictator you oppose, and and why can't they be as smart as we are? And the fact <laughs> is, they're really stupid. They don't know what the hell they're talking about half of the time, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Well, I mean, yeah, and you can see, of course, this process in your own communities. I mean, uh, in our own communities, considering that, um, you know, Canada, one of the things it's absolutely renowned for is, of course, this whole, like, single-payer, publicly-owned uh, health care system. Right. And, of course, that's being undercut. Of course, it's been under attack in Ontario for quite a long time. Um, I know when I was a kid... Um, certainly is a point in this. Uh, the town I'm in, Guelph, uh, had uh, two hospitals, two emergency wards, you know, and it was much smaller then. Now, of course, it's a city of uh, 120,000 people and growing, and it only has one emergency ward. You know, that was because of the cuts made by a conservative government for really the, the reasons you just pointed out. So, you know, it's like we, you know, these left critics, I mean, like we see this everywhere. And, um, you know, well, honestly, I think we should thing, open our eyes. The same thing in the, in UK, in the UK, right? In, oh, yeah. In Britain, the, uh, the private utility companies, electric companies, um, uh, the, the, top, the top managers got a, their, their salaries doubled and tripled and quadrupled. Uh, the services were cut back and were less, were inferior to what they had been before. And the rates were much higher. So you're paying more and getting less. That's, that's, that's what the secret of capitalism is. Oh, yeah. And they, and they talk about how, the oh, the free market can do it better. <laughs> no, it, it can't. <laughs> it, it, what it can do better is put up a, a big cloud of propaganda about, about, about what it supposedly does or doesn't do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was the interview I did with Michael Parenti as of last uh, last week. And, of course, you were listening to Back in the USSR on 93.3 FM uh, CFRU. And, uh, and yeah, it was a very, it was really, was a pleasure and very, very fitting to do the interview, that interview on, uh, on this show, given what is going on right now in, in Ontario in particular, given that, uh, the, uh, it's getting pretty scary. It looks like the conservatives are poised to take power, not only on the federal, you know, they've of course gained power on the federal level, but they're poised to take it on the provincial level as well. It looks like every indication is showing that, that people are going to fall for it again. They're going to fall for the whole conservatives are fiscally responsible kind of claptrap yet again. And, of course, it seems like they, they have, a, they have a, a tendency to forget, it seems, things like, say, the 407, you know, a publicly financed, publicly run, uh, publicly constructed with taxpayer money highway that was then privatized and then used to charge exorbitant fees to those who use it, you know, like stuff like that. And, of course, the power grid, the Ontario power grid, was, of course, built at public expense, at taxpayer expense with taxpayer, taxpayer dollars, and then basically parceled out to the private sector. So now they're, you know, gouging us on our electrical bo- uh, bills, you know, more and more, because, of course, it's pro- for profit, right? For profit means they're going to find every little, any little thing in order to make money. So uh, any, little, any little bills they can do, because, of course, what do they want to do? They want to turn a profit, so that's what they do. And, of course, they also forget Walkerton, you know. You get public services, in this case, the water supply, being contracted out to private contractors. You know, they cut corners. Guess what happens? You know, E. coli blooms start to happen. A dozen people end up dead. You know, that kind of thing. We're going to see more of that. If the conservatives come into power in this, this province, we're going to see more of that. You know, and then we wonder why, after Mike Harris leaves office in the, ni- in the 1990s, the, the provincial debt is higher than it's ever been. You know, after like his whole privatization campaigns and like, you know, building things at public expense and then turning them over to the private sector and stuff like that and subsidizing business and doing things like that. And then we wonder why the debt is so high. And, of course, you know, the conservatives just step out and see, and then like, we'll blame it on, on the liberals who, of course, come in after them. And, of course, don't do nearly enough to, like, clean, thing, clean up that whole mess. And, I mean, yeah, it's just like we, we don't learn. We don't – like, this is, like, barely a decade, you know, just over a decade ago. And, like, we still don't know. We don't have not learned from that. And we're ready to go through it again. That is sad. That is sad, folks. Very, very sad. And it does make me angry. I will not lie. And I think that kind of, that comes out there. And speaking to Michael Prendy about that and just realizing how form, uh, like, you know, fitting that is, 
you know that that whole interview is with, with the, what's going on right now how uh how he explained it all i mean it's just it's 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 scary it really is i mean what i said about the hospital situation in guelph is true we only have one emergency ward and guelph general hospital guelph general hospital the hospital i was born in by the way is not even operating at full capacity it has an entire wing that it cannot afford to use so it's sitting empty you know, and of course, like, you know, funding has been cut back for like, you know, or mismanaged for what and whatnot for healthcare for a long, long time. Because frankly, d- especially with the conservatives in, in power in Ottawa now, do they actually want to see the public not for profit healthcare system work? Of course they don't. They don't want to see that work. They want a more American style healthcare system in Canada. So, of course, they're going to do everything they can to make the public system look bad. They're going to defund it. They're going to make sure, you know, things get back, services get back, like wait times become very long and all this sort of thing. So the public system looks bad. And it's like, okay, we need alternatives. We need the private sector. You know, we need deregulation. And it's the same thing that goes on in the states with public education, you know, getting cut back. You know, and um, and uh, voucher schools being put in, and all this kind of stuff, and of course, you know, healthcare. We all know about that in the states, and it's just it's it's the same claptrap we hear over and over and over again. Which all it is is a taking of publicly owned, commonly held property and turning it over to private interests. You know, that's what ha- that's what this is all about. That's what Hudak's all about, and that's what he will do. When he comes into power, and he's, he's betting he's going to come into power in September. You know, that's what he's going to do. Big time. Don't fall for it, folks. Never fall for it. Or you will pay the price. Mark my words. 